I'm Bill Fischoffer with the Lennar Networking Group, and I can't take credit for any of this, what we're going to talk about today. This was all done by the other fine colleagues that are listed here. Uh, but what we'd like to do this morning is just share with you some of the results that we've uh, seen over the last few months in using ODP to enhance a number of applications, some of which were um, uh, using standard uh, applications and some of which are using uh, uh, special benchmark uh, tools. What we'd like to talk about this morning, ah, are we getting uh, some of our other presenters, uh, is, is OpenSSL work. Um, some work done with the uh, L3 Forward uh, benchmark program on uh, both x86 and uh, SOCs, uh, Nginx, which is an open source web server, uh, and uh, various uh, L3 and L2 uh, forwarding uh, comparisons showing the effects of core isolation. So uh, the one disclaimer is that uh, while we're presenting a snapshot of some of the work we've done, uh, this is still very much ongoing work, uh, and we just wanted to share with you some of the current uh, views of this. So I think we are starting with OpenSSL. Did you want to? Uh... So uh, uh, Nikhil will, uh, will take us through some of the, uh, the OpenSSL results. Hello, good morning everyone. This is Nikhil from NXP. So this one, uh, this work basically we have done is uh, open S with OpenSSL integrating ODP with OpenSSL. So OpenSSL, as you know, is a widely accepted crypto library. Uh, so generally platforms uh, uses crypto dev engine for uh, enhancing performance for OpenSSL. So what work we have done is uh, we have uh, created a new engine based on ODP so that platform supporting ODP will be able to upload the OpenSSL API uh, for crypto operation to the hardware directly without going to the kernel space. So uh, we have done some performance benchmark on that. So uh, basically, uh, first we tried it with uh, OpenSSL uh, the generic software implementation with the OpenSSL. So that results and uh, and uh, there's some more measurements we'll go through in that in uh, later slides. Uh, so this is basically what we have done. Uh, so we have this OpenSSL benchmark application and uh, running over OpenSSL. So we have put in this ODP based engine in OpenSSL. Uh, which is running over uh, DPA2 platform. Uh, this is an NXP platform with a hardware acceleration. Uh, the, we have this CAM block in, the, in this SOC, which is like crypto accelerator with some functionalities. So here are the results that we got on this platform. So uh, this blue line layer uh, shows that the software implementation of the crypto library uh, does not perform very well. Uh, so, uh, next what we did is like uh, there is an uh, ARM crypto extensions uh, that are present in the ARM core with V8. So this red line shows that the performance of uh, performance of OpenSSL benchmark application with ARM crypto extensions. But as you see, uh, if you use the uh, ARM crypto extensions, it's it's just bottlenecks the code because it utilizes all the code. You, there is no code available for any other functionality. So uh, what next we we done is that we utilize libssl ODP that uh, we have written the new engine. So with that, uh, we are able to offload the crypto work to the hardware accelerator. So uh, in that hardware accelerator, as we see that for the small size packets, uh, there is an overhead and it performs less than ARM crypto extensions just because uh, there is a cost of uh, cost associated with offloading uh, the crypto operation to the hardware, some DMA memory accesses and uh, you know interface between software and hardware that's cost a bit more. So uh, as you go up the packet sizes it 
it performs uh, approximately uh, 20 times than the ARM crypto extensions that performs. Uh, so then we enhance this engine to go for a hybrid approach. So in hybrid approach, what we did is that this uh, request with the small packet sizes goes, uh, is completed with the ARM crypto extensions in software only, and the request for the large packet sizes goes to the hardware. So there's still a gap between ARM crypto extension and this hybrid approach uh, for the small size packets. That's because the engine overhead and we are optimizing that as of now. But uh, for this large packet size, we can see uh, that there is a huge gap between performance for ARM crypto extension and hardware accelerators. So this will be beneficial for the platforms having uh, crypto acceleration in their platform. Uh, for this, uh, and uh, plus there'll be most of the core empty for the rest of the processing, whatever we, they can, they, they want to do. So this is the work we'll be, we'll be dem demonstrating this performance tomorrow in the demo sessions as well. So see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have the uh, L3 forward. And uh, Farashi will uh, take us through that. Hello, everyone. Uh, here I will report some benchmark results about the L3 forward with Linux kernel and the L3 forward in the native DPTK and also L3 forward on the ODP DPTK, uh, also ODP generic with DPTK packet IO. That's a, that's a simple di diagram of the connections. We have head centers with two 10 GB connections with a x86 machines. The x86 machine was inserted with an x7 10DA2 NIC. That's a graph about the ODPS three forward uh, compared with uh, the kernel L3 forward. <clears throat> we can we can see the bottom the bottom part with the blue line is the L3 forward, L3 forward performance data with the kernel. And uh, the top part with the green green line is the ODP DPTK performance. We can see we have uh, we, the o ODP DPTK L3 forward performance is better than the kernel versions. We with package size bigger than 256, we got the nine rate about 20 GBPS. But we cannot get the nine rate in the kernel. Uh, this this one is uh, performance data uh, on the on the NXP ARM board. We also can see uh, the ODP R3 forward 
performance is also better than the kernel versions. That, that graph is about the ODP DPDK performance and the native DPDK performance. <clears throat> here we here we can see we have some performance gap compared with the DPDK native performance because the DPDK uh, was highly optimized with a uh, with the x86 machines. Like it will use the MMX instructions, vector instructions. ODB will cover more architectures, so there is some performance gap. This, this graph is about the ODP generic Linux performance and the ODP DPDK performance. Uh, ODP Linux is running with the, the socket uh, packet IO interface. And the ODP DPDK is running with the DPDK packet, packet IO. We also can see the ODP DPDK performance is better than the generic socket interface. This one is a Linux kernel L3, uh, L3 forward and the ODP Linux with socket I/O interface, the uh, Linux Linux gen generic uh, versions R3 forward. We can also say it's uh, better than the kernel versions. Also, this. This one is uh, the ODP Linux generic versions of ODP DPDK version and also DPDK native L3 forward performance that is running on uh, 40G BPS NIC card. Uh, we, we can see the performance is scalable with the core numbers. And uh, the the ODP Linux versions got got to the 30, 35 GB, GBPS, but uh, we cannot uh, reach the 80 GBPS. This, this graph is a ODP L3 forward and the native DBTK L3 forward. Th that is, uh, we, we can see we have some performance gap be between the native DPDK. For, for the small packet size, there is uh, about 70% degradation about the, compared with the native DPDK. When we when we increase the back size to 2056, then we, we can see the performance, performance data 
reach to the line rate. Okay, thank you. Okay, and uh, Yosef will now take us through some stuff with Nginx. Thank you, Bill. Good morning. Um, so when I joined Linaro for five weeks ago, so they asked me that I to make some measurements on uh, Nginx, and um, the setup would look like two servers connected back to back to a 10 gigabit interface. And in one of them, we would run Nginx. And on the other one, we would run this HTTP uh, application, which measures um, the performance of the web server. Um, we would also have two different um, flavors of Nginx, one running on the TCP IP stack of the Linux kernel, and the other one running on OFP, which is Open Fast Path, which is a user space IP stack running on, on top of ODP. In this case, since, it's, since it is x86, it was running on ODP, DPDK. So we run those tests, and um, you see the blue line in the bottom. This is Nginx running on top of the Linux IP stack, which doesn't look quite right. We knew that this was not, um, we made something wrong with the measurements. Um, but nevertheless, we wanted to put it on the, on the screen. Um, the other two lines, this is, these are Nginx running on top of OFP. This is a version of Nginx ported to, to run on OFP by the Open FastPath uh, guys. Uh, the one on the top is an optimized version of OFP for the web server. And you see that it kind of um, flattens at around 40,000 um, packets per second. Um, and we think this is, we believe this is because the client cannot generate enough traffic. So, because we are using quite slow servers. The second one is the version of Open FastPath that you would get by downloading it from Open FastPath. We have a Debian uh, repository. And um, we also are showing that this is like 16 cores, but it's, in reality, it's eight real cores. So that's why there is a dip after eight cores. Um, yeah, we also run this on a commodity hardware, on a one gigabit interface in this case, where we can see at least that the, um, on the bottom, the Linux IP stack is kind of uh, getting better with the number of cores, except for three cores. I don't know why we got this deep. We need to investigate more about that. These are preliminary numbers. So, um, last night I ran some tests also on the Linux IP stack, because what do you do in Vegas at night? And um, I have to say that it now looks, this, this light looks much better for the Linux IP stack. It's, kind of performing better with a number of cores, still not quite well as an open fast path, but at least it's scaling with a number of cores. Uh, and that was it for me, actually. Thank you. Yeah. So you Okay, so um, the last thing we wanted to talk about is the uh, uh, ODP Linux forwarding performance with isolation, and unfortunately, our, the colleague who did the work is not here, so you'll have to forgive me to, uh, I'm gonna impersonate him. Um, so just to give a background on uh, some of these tools we're using, so uh, L2 forward is a simple layer two forwarding application. Uh, if you look in the DPDK examples, uh, they include a L2 forward and an L3 forward uh, application, and, uh, which is used for simple benchmark testing of, uh, of that product. And what we have done is created ODP versions of these tools. Now, the tools themselves are, are doing the same function, but obviously they're not exactly the same code. So there's always a gap between 
how the tool itself is, is uh, tuned versus how uh, the underlying technology is providing. So there's always a couple of variables that are involved with, with these type of side-by-side -side comparisons. So we try to keep them to a minimum, but there are some slight differences. So what uh, we're doing for here is the ODP generator and the L2 forwarding uh, application running on two uh, x86 CPUs in normal Linux user space environment, and then checking them how they run with isolated uh, uh, CPU set cores. So we have 10 sets of measurements taken with 10 samples each, uh, both with and without isolation. And isolation is achieved by starting the uh, L2 forwarding app on an isolated CPU set. So what this chart is showing is uh, as we increase the number of workers, if we do, and then the blue line, uh, if we do not uh, isolate, uh, you see we rapidly reach a point of diminishing returns, that they, they're, they're essentially thrashing each other as they're uh, moving around, whereas uh, the red line is showing uh, a lot more stable performance. Now, there are a couple of dips in here, which um, I don't know if we have any uh, analysis of what was causing those. It may have had to do with, uh, uh, with some of the uh, uh, interference between uh, uh, some of the memory. But, uh, but the point is that isolation is providing much more level uh, performance uh, compared to unisolated. And that's basically the, uh, the main uh, data that we wanted to share with you. Um, if there are questions, I'd invite my uh, colleagues to come up here. We can, uh, we can discuss any of these in more detail uh, or answer any other questions regarding some of the measurement work that we've been doing. Anyone? Yeah. Do you want to go back to this one? Um, I, yes, I believe that is is on a on a on a per core basis. Isn't that uh, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that's on a per core basis. And I do not. The question is, what's the packet size on this? Do you have that uh, information? I, I we'll have to get that. I don't have that. I, I I believe that these were probably whatever packet size produced the best number. <laughs> that's the usual uh, assumption. I don't, I don't have the data on, on this particular slide, so um, you know, if we have questions on some of the other ones, we've got the people here who actually did the work uh, that can answer that. Um, Maybe we because can, there are threads? I'm sorry? Maybe because there are no, hyper-threading? So. Yeah, well, hyper-threading is, is one of the, uh, the, the, the issues potentially here, so. Any, any questions about some of the other uh, uh, measurements? I mean, I think there's a couple of things that are worth, uh, you know, noting. Um, you know, particularly in, in things like OpenSSL, um, obviously for smaller packet sizes, it's cheaper to do them on a CPU itself rather than use an offload accelerator, uh, which is why on the, the red line here, uh, the, uh, the ARM CE instructions, you know, perform very good on the lower uh, packets, small packet sizes, but then sort of tail off for the larger packet sizes when the going to an offload engine is, uh, uh, is, is in, you know, gives you much, clearly much better performance. And the green line here is, a, is sort of a hybrid approach where the uh, ODP accelerator code attempts to heuristically guess whether it's more efficient to do th the crypto operation inline versus go to an offload accelerator. So you certainly get a boost over always going to the offload accelerator uh, for that. Um, any other questions? Yes. So how how to keep packet order? So uh, one, of the, one of the features that ODP provides is, uh, is automatic order preservation through, uh, through the use of ordered queues. And that's, that's one, one mechanism for doing that. Uh, I believe we'll, we'll cover that in, uh, in probably the next talk. Um,
we'll have some, some information on that. Yes. Well, the, the, uh, for, the, uh, for, for, for these, uh, for L2 and L340, there's, there's no TCP stack, but, but for, for this, yeah. oh, for OpenSSL, um, is this using? Maybe. For OpenSSL, we, we did not, uh, did the IPsec test, we, we d uh, ran this OpenSSL uh, benchmark application called an OpenSSL speed application that comes with an OpenSSL package itself. So, uh, so uh, this is like open SL benchmark application. This is a uh, speed application. So this does not uh, do any IP-based processing. It's just uh, use the cryptographic operation. It uh, creates a random packet in the software, uh, gives for the cryptographic operation to, uh, to the open SL library and takes back, verifies the result, and just run it for the f few seconds and uh, publish the results. Yeah, I think I think we're not doing this is this is not actual packets. This is just crypto operations produced through OpenSSL. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other Go question. Ahead. Sorry, uh, in layer 3 folding part, you mentioned different uh, kernels in uh, uh, ODP, uh, DPDK and uh, different uh, uh, kernels. So what's the difference between this uh, situation, you know? Uh, I, I can say the different performance from these different kernels. So what's the difference between these kernels? Uh, the kernel versions uh, of L340 is uh, uh, forwarding in the kernel space, that is a feature of the kernel. And the uh, ODP DPDK is a user space L3 forward. So it, the driver is in the user space that is uh, provided by the DPDK. And they have three kernels and three ODP DPDK. So what's the difference between these three? In your picture, you can see. Yeah, yeah, here, and you can see the different DPDK and the different. Is there any uh, package job in your testing, and how do you uh, avoid this? Packet job, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we are now the, let me see, the 0 0.001 person, uh, percentage. That means, uh, uh, 100,000 packet we can allow one packet lost. Okay, so uh, how many rules in your loading table? Or? Uh, for this testing, we have for 20G uh, test benchmark, we have two rules. Two rules only. Right. That is uh, compared with the DPDK native S3 for the points. That is uh, uh, Similar. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, 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 how did you uh, stress the layer three perform, uh, 
uh, traffic. You use the uh, some open source tools. Or Sorry, uh, your your traffic gen generator. Uh, uh. Uh, we, we use a uh, hardware test hardware center so. from Spirin. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, except the, the throughput, did you measure some other parameter like a delay? Uh, currently no. Currently no. Yeah. Do you have plan to do this? Uh, I, I what kind of scenario you want? I mean, like uh, for a packet who, who like go through like uh, uh, this. Uh, Here we only touch throughput. So only test the throughput, okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you go back to op open SSL? I have uh, a few questions. Yeah, this one. I'll just go to the next one. Yeah, it's, it's uh, have a few scenario like uh, lib SSL ODP. So, uh, how did you build it? Sorry, lib SSL ODP. I don't know. Sorry. I mean, for lib SSL ODP, yeah. how did you build this library? So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so OpenSSL basically provides an interface, engine interface. You can uh, write your own engine in OpenSSL. So basically, we we wrote an engine uh, base uh, which uses ODP for the cryptographic operations, uh, and registered this engine with OpenSSL. So whenever uh, any cryptographic request comes to the OpenSSL, it goes to this engine and ultimately to the ODP. For the uh, ARM uh, extension, like yeah. uh, actually you build uh, with some, uh, suppose some uh, ARM extension like hardware features, right? So ARM crypto extension. Yeah, crypto uh, extension, yes. So uh, this is basically uh, in the OpenSSL, they have done the uh, one implementation that is using ARM crypto extension for cryptographic operations. Okay, okay. Thank you. Is th this this code is being upstreamed to OpenSSL? So this is uh, not upstreamed in OpenSSL, but it is available on the Linarojet public Linarojet. Okay. So this is basically a POC work as of now. So we'll be uh, productionizing it, and then uh, we'll be submitting patches in OpenSSL. Yeah, I, th I think one of the key points is that uh, once you know this is installed, uh, the SSL OpenSSL application has no changes at all. So it just gets this benefit. Right. So, so already running OpenSSL application will, will need not to change anything. It will run as it is. Um, just it will use the, uh, on the background for the cryptographic operations, ODP will be used instead of any other uh, implementation. So uh, we have, I have personally have a very strong interest to do this the same thing. So if we can maybe collaborate, because I want to get an engine into Open SSL that accelerates our uh, uses our hardware too. So for this stuff, did you also <coughs> use the cryptographic hardware for the public key infrastructure stuff or not? No, this is for the uh, this is symmetric keys using AES 128 operations only. So we we plan to uh, you know extend this work for other protocols as well, uh, other algorithms as well. But as of now, this result is for AES 128 CBC. What mode do you use? CBC? Uh, so uh, we or want GCM. to include uh, GCM. We want to include and maybe some authentication protocol for Shaven or. Things. Well, GCM you don't need one, but for CBC you uh, you have we, to have something. Uh, we have done CBC only. Uh, okay, CBC. This is all CBC. Okay. This is CBC only. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you very much.